We previously proved the basic sequence limit laws, which showed us that convergent sequences work very nicely with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and even division. Now we'll prove the so-called order limit theorem, which tells us that convergent sequences also work pretty nicely with the order relation. There are three statements to this theorem, so let's quickly read through it. We're letting AN and BN be convergent sequences. AN converges to A and BN converges to B. The first statement is that if every term of a convergent sequence is at least zero, then the limit of that sequence is also at least zero. The second statement is if every term of one convergent sequence is less than or equal to some other convergent sequence, then their limits have that same relation. So in this case, AN is less than or equal to BN, so A is less than or equal to B. And the third statement is that if a convergent sequence is bounded below by some real number, then the limit of that convergent sequence is at least as big as that lower bound. Similarly, if a convergent sequence is bounded above by some real number, then its limit is less than or equal to that real number, that upper bound. Sequences can be quite tricky at times, so it's very nice to have some more intuitive results about how they work. These statements are about as easy to prove as they seem obvious. We'll prove one with a straightforward contradiction argument, and then using one as well as one of our sequence limit laws, we'll be able to prove two, and then we can use two to prove three. And there will be links in the description to my lessons proving the sequence limit laws. The one that we'll be using today is the limit law for the difference of sequences. So let's get right into things and prove statement one. We assume that every term of our convergent sequence is at least zero, and we want to prove that its limit A is also at least zero. So we'll suppose for contradiction, SFC, that the limit A is in fact less than zero. The idea then is pretty straightforward. Since the sequence AN gets arbitrarily close to its limit A, if A is negative, then surely we can find a negative term of our sequence, which will be a contradiction because we assume that every term of our sequence was non-negative, greater than or equal to zero. Now remember by definition of a convergent sequence, for any positive number epsilon, the terms of our sequence A n eventually get within epsilon of the limit A. So let's consider an epsilon value of the absolute value of A. So we'll say let epsilon equal the absolute value of A. Remember, to apply our definition of convergent sequences, epsilon has to be positive, and indeed it is here. Since A is less than zero, its absolute value is certainly greater than zero. Then, considering this positive epsilon, absolute value of A, we apply the definition of A n converging to A, which tells us there exists some number big N, so that every term of our sequence after and including the big nth term is within that epsilon value of the limit a. So we know there's some number big N so that for every N greater than or equal to big N, the absolute value of a N minus the limit a is less than the absolute value of a, which was our chosen epsilon. I'll point out that most of the time when I use the definition of a convergent sequence, I say for every n greater than big N, not greater than or equal to. However, the difference is arbitrary. For this proof, I've chosen to use this equivalent form of the definition just because it makes it a little simpler to pick out a particular value of the sequence that will be useful. We know that this inequality holds for all n greater than or equal to big N. So let's consider the particular term of our sequence, a big N. 
So since this holds for all n greater than or equal to big N, it certainly holds for the big nth term of our sequence. So in particular, we have that the absolute value of a big N minus a is less than the absolute value of a. Now remember, if an absolute value function changes the number within it, it only makes it bigger, since it either doesn't change the number or it changes it from negative to positive. That means if the absolute value of a big N minus a is less than the absolute value of a, then certainly a big N minus a without the absolute value bars must be less than the absolute value of a. Removing the absolute value bars could only possibly make this smaller, so certainly this inequality is true. But then remember, a is negative. So subtracting a is the same as adding the magnitude of a. In other words, this is the same as a big N plus the absolute value of a. Again, that's because a is negative. So when we subtract it, we just end up adding its magnitude. So this inequality is equivalent to a big N plus the absolute value of a is less than the absolute value of a. But then if we subtract the absolute value of a from both sides of this inequality, we have that a big N is less than the absolute value of a minus itself, which is zero. And so we have a term of our sequence which is less than zero. But that's a contradiction because we suppose that every term of our sequence was greater than or equal to zero. This contradiction followed from our assumption that the limit was negative. Thus, the limit must must in fact be non-negative. It's greater than or equal to zero. So if we have a convergent sequence, every term of which is greater than or equal to zero, then its limit is also greater than or equal to zero. Now I'll just go ahead and move this out of the way so that we can prove our next result while keeping more of the original statement on screen. Next up, we want to prove part two. So if we have two convergent sequences, a n converging to a and b n converging to b, and every term a n is less than or equal to b n, we must have that a is less than or equal to b. Certainly, a n being less than or equal to b n directly implies that b n minus a n is greater than or equal to zero. And remember, this holds for all n, because we were given that the original inequality held for all n. This is useful because what do we know about the sequence of terms b n minus a n? By our previously proven sequence limit theorems, if we create a new sequence by subtracting the terms of two convergent sequences, this new sequence must converge to the difference of their limits. So b n minus a n converges to b minus a. But remember, every term of this sequence is greater than or equal to zero. And by result number one, which we just proved, we showed that if every term of a sequence is greater than or equal to zero, then its limit is greater than or equal to zero, for a convergent sequence, of course. Hence, the limit of this sequence, b minus a, must be greater than or equal to zero. Then that implies, adding a to both sides, that a is less than or equal to b. And that's precisely what we wanted to prove. Once again, I'll go ahead and move this out of the way. We'll move on to our final item. Once more, statement three is that if there exists a real number c less than or equal to every term of a convergent sequence, then c is less than or equal to the limit of that sequence. And similarly, if c is greater than or equal to every term of a convergent sequence. Proving number three is very simple. Suppose we have this real number c, which satisfies either of these conditions. Consider the sequence s n, where every term is equal to c. We could then apply result two, which we just proved for either of these cases. If c is less than or equal to every term b n, we would have that every term of our sequence s n is less than or equal to b n. But then b n converges to b, 
and our constant sequence Sn converges to its constant value C, and I'll leave a link in the description to my proof of that, that a constant sequence converges to its constant value. So with that in mind, by result number two, this would imply that C has to be less than or equal to B, which is what we would want to prove. And the same method would work if C was greater than or equal to every term A n. We could consider the constant sequence S n where every term is equal to C. Then since C is greater than or equal to A n, we would have that every term of our sequence S n is greater than or equal to every term A n. And then since S n converges to its constant value of C, and a n converges to a, this would directly imply by result number two that a is less than or equal to c, which is what we want to prove. And so that proves all parts of this statement. And that is the very straightforward proof of the order limit theorem. Once more, if every term of a convergent sequence is at least zero, then its limit is at least zero. If every term of a convergent sequence is less than or equal to every term of some other convergent sequence, then their limits have that same relation. The limit of the smaller sequence is less than or equal to the limit of the greater sequence. And if every term of a convergent sequence is greater than or equal to some real number c, then its limit is also greater than or equal to that number c. If every term of a convergent sequence is less than or equal to some real number, then its limit is less than or equal to that real number. Ground. It can't be helped. The gravity pulls down.